This is the first in a, in a series of videos on how you would sync your iPad to your iTunes on a computer, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, Windows or Apple. Uh, at the moment, my iPad is not connected. I have a phone that's connected, but when I connect the cable that came with the iPad into the port uh, to the dock on the bottom of the computer, then it will be detected and will come up in the devices screen. So that's what I'll do now, connect it into the dock. And pretty quickly it's detected. And once it's been um, identified, it will start the syncing process. So while it's doing that, I can click on it and it's still going to take a bit of time before it comes up. There it is there. So I click on it and we have a series of screens, series of tabs up here. Now it's, it's quite a long process syncing the iPad or explaining the process. So the video will be in several parts. So the first part will concentrate on explaining the, the summary and the info tabs and the next one looking at apps then music, then movies and TV shows. And the last one, we'll look at podcasts, iTunes U, books and photos. Now, as soon as I plugged the cable in, it's begun the syncing process. So you can see up here, it's seven steps in the process. And the first step is backing up what's already there, backing up the data on the iPad to your iTunes library then it will transfer the purchases. So it's starting to look at what apps have been purchased or downloaded on the iPad that are not present in the iTunes library. And it's copying those over. Uh, it's looking at the data in the Safari browser on the iPad and copying that as well. So you've got some bookmarks. It's now starting to copy the actual uh, apps and it's copying them, copying them from the iPad to my iTunes library. And while it's doing that, we'll just go through what the summary tab it tells you. Uh, the summary tab is just that. It just gives you um, an overview of the main elements of your iPad. So it will tell you up in the, in the top section, the uh, name of your iPad. And I haven't called it anything but iPad. I could call it Michelle's iPad, but I just haven't called it anything. I've just left it at its default name. If I wanted to change it, could go in over here and click into it. Maybe I need to wait till it stops syncing, but I, by just uh, clicking on it in here, you can change its name. It will tell you the capacity. So it's a, a 57, it's a 64 gigabyte iPad, but with the operating system, you don't get quite all of the 64. The software version that you're running and its serial number, which may you know come in handy if you have any warranty issues or you need to, to, to correspond with Apple over what over some problem. The version. So if you um, wanted to restore your iPad, if it was really giving you problems and you'd done a, a hard reset and a soft reset, nothing has helped, rebooted it, you could restore it to its factory defaults. So clicking that button will um, wipe everything off it. So if you if you click restore, you have to be, be aware that everything will go on the iPad. It'll go back to how it was when you got it out of the box. And, and sometimes that's the only way that, that something will be fixed. Check for updates. Every so often there is a new uh, update or an actual new operating system for your iPad. So you should always check regularly. Maybe once a fortnight you connect your iPad to iTunes and sync it. And then if there's any update to the operating system, that will be part of the syncing process. But you need to be up to date. The version will tell you the last time this was 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 checked it was the 23rd of, of uh, August and it's today so it's just done it today while we've been waiting uh, if I wanted to be sure I could click that button and check for an update and it would check it for me the backup pane um, you can back up to iCloud you can back up to this computer now I have elected to back up my iPad to the computer that it's attached to. The iTunes library that I have is on a server that goes to, to all 
anyone in the house that has a wireless device can, can use that library. So that's how I want mine to be backed up. But you could also elect to back up to iCloud. And the iPad, when you set it up, has um, an iCloud account and you can back up uh, and synchronize to your iCloud account, your notes, your mail, um, photos, a number of things. And I don't want to do that. I want to back mine up to the computer. You can also encrypt your backup if you don't want it to fall into wrong hands. I don't bother with that. The options at the bottom there. I have done another video which goes through what each of these ones mean. So I'll put a link at the end of the video to that video. So I won't talk about those in this one uh, apart from this top, the second one here. When If you have that selected, then... When you plug your iPad into power with a cable into anywhere in your house, it doesn't have to be connected to the computer, but if it's connected to power and this computer's on, it doesn't have to be connected to it. On your iPad, you can sync your iPad over Wi-Fi and there is a setting in the iPad uh, that will allow you to do that in settings. At the bottom of the summary pane is the capacity bar. And that lets you know visually what is stored on this iPad, how much space that that type of media is taking up, and uh, what if, how much space you have left. So it's a 57.17 gigabyte capacity with the operating system taking about two and a half gigabytes. And at the moment, there is 1.3 gigabyte of audio, and you can look at the blue color. That's the audio, so you can see you know, how big each type of media is. So the green part is the apps. There's 21 gigabytes of apps on here. And the other end here, there's 26 gigabytes free. So if you start to see your free space shrinking and you want to get rid of some of your information, then look at the biggest one. I might get rid of some of those apps that I don't use if I wanted to free up some space. Now the syncing is finished uh, and it's just sort of now back to what it's downloading just off iTunes. If I wanted to start the syncing process again, there is a, a button down here. I can click that and it will start syncing again and it's I've forced it to sync again even though it's just done a sync. So it's preparing and it's got six steps. It, it'll go through backing up, finding the uh, apps to download and it'll be much quicker because I've, I've just done a great big sync now. So it's transferring purchases and we'll just let, let it go through. Step five, it's not going to have much to do because it's just done a big sync, but that's sort of the process. It's automatic. It happens in the background. Your uh, iPad data is backed up to a backup uh, space in your iTunes library. That's finished again. But every time I make a change while I'm mucking around with these panes, it will sync again. I can sync it again. So the info pane. And the info pane has... Uh, your contacts, calendars, mail, and an other and an advanced section. Now, if you wanted to sync your contacts, so on your iPad, you have a, a contacts app where you have uh, a, a, you know, email addresses, phone numbers, uh, address information of contacts that you correspond with. If you wanted to make sure that those contacts were backed up to your iTunes account on this computer, then you would select Sync Contacts. I have not got mine selected because I sync my contacts with iCloud. And as it says down here, if I turned it on on my iTunes um, software in, and I synced the iPad to the contacts on this computer, then I would have duplicate contacts because I'm getting my contacts from iCloud. It's in the, uh, in the internet. It's being pushed down to my iPad from iCloud. And when I attach my iPad to the computer, it's pushing it from the computer to the iPad. I've got two sets of the same data. So you have to have them in one, spot, one place only. Either you back them up to your computer that your iPad's connected to or to iCloud. The same with calendars. Syncing calendars, I sync mine to iCloud, I sync my mail to iCloud. If I wanted to cho change the way the mail worked, for example, if I actually select that, and I decide that I want one of these mail accounts 
to now be synced to my computer, I could turn the ones off that I didn't want synced, leave one of them selected, so my big pond accounts, I now want that to be synced to this computer. So I'll select that one, I'll apply the change, and as soon as I do that, the sync button will come back. Now, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo what I just did and turn that off. Uh, the sync button is there if I've made any changes and I want to update by syncing. The other, if you have, um, we have Safari on your iPad, and if you want the bookmarks on Safari to be synced to, again, the um, iTunes library, then select that. Same with notes. I sync my bookmarks with another program called Xmarks, and that will sync bookmarks over uh, as many different computers and browsers as possible, so I'd rather use that. The advanced pane, if your contacts, for example, has become a bit corrupted or it's full of duplicates on the iPad, you can replace it with the contacts on this computer. The next time it syncs the, and you select this, the contacts will be from the computer. The contacts from the computer will be copied over to the iPad and fix fix up you know, the, the mess that you have on your iPad. And um, that's handy if something's happened to the information on your iPad. Um, part two will follow, and that will discuss the apps, music, movies, and TV panes.